Hey there everybody, Paul Newsom here from Swim Smooth. How are you doing this week? Well, right now over here in Perth, we're into week two of our lockdown with respect to being able to access the swimming pool. And it's been quite a weird week to be perfectly honest with you because normally I'm up at five o'clock on the pool deck every morning and I'm liaising and coaching at least a hundred people every single day. So I've gone from that crashing down to absolute zero in the last week and it does feel quite strange to be honest with you. But I'm really glad for you guys actually popping in the comments and feedback to us over the last week because we've been able to answer a lot of questions and also be able to actually provide some new videos based on what you wanted to hear. And the big topic this week has definitely been about the idea of if you've still got access to the open water, which people over here in Perth, it's still a beautiful 23 degrees in the Indian Ocean, people are still able to self-isolate but go for the training session maybe in the open water by themselves. In the Northern Hemisphere, we're at the uh, start of April right now, the water temperature is probably still quite on the low side, but it is going to be coming up and you are going to be starting to think, how can I access the open water and what sort of training sessions should I be doing? So the common question is, okay, well, I'm getting out for my swims in the open water if you're able to, but how do I structure it a little bit better so I'm getting a little bit more bang for my buck from those sessions? Now, it's totally okay, of course, if you just want to get out there and leave your thoughts, etc., and use the swimming as a little bit of a stress relief. That's personally what I'm doing. But if you are of the mindset that you want a little bit of structure so that when we come back to the pool and those sort of things, you're able to really file on all cylinders, I'm going to provide you with some tips now on what you can do for that. First off though, I'm going to tell you very briefly about a story that happened to me in 1998. In 1998, I was actually preparing for the uh, National Triathlon Championships over in the UK, which is where I'm from. And I thought it'd be a really good use of my time to move away from the pool entirely in the two weeks before that event and train purely in the open water. The idea being that I was training totally specifically for that. Each day I would get in and swim anywhere between about 1.5 and 2.5 kilometers and probably at close to threshold pace. But I wasn't doing anything more structured than that. I just assumed that that specificity would help me during the race itself. I remember doing that race in 1998 and being really quite surprised by how much fitness I felt I'd actually dropped off when the gun went off and we started racing along the river in, uh, in Ironbridge as it was in the UK. So uh, that got me sort of thinking even as far back as then about how you can maybe structure your training sessions that you'd normally be doing in the pool out in the open water. The biggest disadvantage that you've got in the open water is not knowing exactly how far you've swum. Now, since 1998, technology, GPS technology, Garmin and, and the like have really come on very, very strongly. So we can now, with some degree of accuracy, measure how far we're swimming. And then it just becomes a case of, okay, well, if we can combine the known distance with a time factor like a pace, for example, then you should still be able to structure your training sessions appropriately. So I'm gonna now show you a couple of gadgets that you can be using for this, and then we're gonna discuss the sort of training sets that you can probably be doing in the open water to help keep yourself ticking over. Now, I'm gonna bring out an absolute relic here. This is a Garmin 310 XT, still one of my favorites, and it still sits in my uh, little toolbox, as it were. You'll notice I've actually removed the strap. So, in my other hand here is the Garmin Swim 2. This has just been released. But the Garmin 310 XT, I've actually removed the straps so that this will actually fit and sit underneath my swimming cap. The idea being that we've got constant access to GPS and hopefully a little bit more of an accurate readout and output from that. But the thing with the Garmin is when, or any sort of GPS device, to be perfectly honest with you, when you're swimming along with it, you don't really know how fast you're swimming you only know how far you've gone once you stop and maybe take a look at your watch at halfway, for example, or when you finish the session in, it, in its entirety. What's really cool about the Garmin and any of the Garmin's, to be honest with you, is you can set like an auto lap. So for me, I like to set the Garmin to beep at me every 500 meters. So I'm swimming along and I'm either listening out for that sort of beep every 500 meters and that sort of... I guess sort of almost subjectively allows me to think, okay, well, I'm here, I'm gonna do a 3K swim, I'm now a sixth of the way through that, now I'm a third, now I'm halfway, et cetera. And it just keeps me sort of motivated because it just gives me a little bit of a, uh, almost like a benchmark, a milestone of where I'm at. Now, what we also like to do is couple the Garmin with a Finis Tempo Trainer. Many of you know that we use these Finis Tempo Trainers in the pool. They've got three different modes. So mode one is normally accurate to one one hundredth of a second. So when you're doing your CSS pace training sessions, what you do, let's say for example, you've got a, a CSS pace of 140 per hundred. 
That's 100 seconds to complete 100 meters or 25 seconds to complete each 25 meters. So in the pool, you'd use the tempo trainer in mode one and you'd actually set it to 25.00. The really cool thing about using it in mode one in the pool, if we could do that at the moment, is that because it's accurate to one one hundredth of a second, you could perform a particular training set, and I'm going to talk to you about those in a moment, on week one, and then in week two, you could make your targets just a little bit faster. So 25.00 could become 24.90. It's such a small micro adjustment on there that on a week-to-week -week basis, swimmers tend not to notice that. Now, mode two, though, actually deals with whole seconds, and that's how you'd use it in the open water. And really, you've got a choice then between using time as a function or stroke rate. So let's say, for example, you're experimenting with your stroke rate. You can use the tempo trainer in mode three, and I know at the moment my stroke rate is around about 74 strokes per minute. I can turn the beeper on, put it into mode three, turn it to 74 strokes per minute, and I can set off just with an audible beep, 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 beep on each stroke, just helping me get my rhythm and fluidity going. Now, that's pretty good. It can get a little bit annoying, to be perfectly honest with you, after a short period of time. However, in mode two, and taking the Garmin as well, if I know that I would like to swim 500 meters at, in seven minutes or 14 minutes per kilometer pace, I can turn the Garmin on to beep at me every 500 meters. I can also turn the tempo trainer on to beep at me every seven minutes. So picture this, I set off with both of these underneath the swimming cap, probably looking a little bit stupid. I press go at the same time and it then becomes a really good game. It's a game of, okay, the pace is seven minutes per 500 meters. Can I get to 500 meters, the vibration with the Garmin at exactly the same time as the tempo trainer is giving me an audible beep to let me know seven minutes has elapsed. I've done so much of my training over the years utilizing this method that it's a really, really good way to actually break down a long distance swim and give you a little bit of feedback on that. Now, both of these two items have actually been out for a long, long period of time. And you could say they're becoming a little bit archaic, but if you have them in your kit bag, then by all means use them. One of the gadgets that we've been utilizing and helping develop over the years though, is this Marlin, or made by Platysens here, the Marlin, it's a great tool. What it does is it sits underneath your cap just like the Garmin would do. You've got a little audible sensor here at the front. It's actually a speaker which talks to you when you're swimming. So in a similar sort of manner to how we're using the Garmin and the Tempo Trainer, you can use the Marlin, and we'll pop a link in the, uh, in the show notes for this. You can use the Marlin to make sure that every 100 meters or even as little as every 50 meters, you get a little bit of feedback about how fast you've swum. Personally, I like to have this set every 100 meters. And what I do is I set it to beep at me every 100 meters. So it'll say 100 meters and it'll say 1 minute 24. And it'll also tell me what stroke rate I've just averaged for that last 100 meters as well, which is really quite cool. So I'm getting a little bit more feedback. In fact, I've actually got a little bit more customization on the feedback than maybe the Garmin and the Tempo Trainer, but the Marlin just keeps me focused on the distance that I'm swimming. And one of the games that I like to play with this is I'd like to be able to average over a 3K swim that I tend to do on a Sunday morning, I'd like to be able to average one minute 30 per 100 as an absolute minimum. Every time I get the feedback from the Marlin, so let's say it comes through and says one minute 24 for that last 100, I think to myself, okay, I've got six seconds in credit. I do the next 100 meters and maybe the wind or the swell has come against me, I've done 132. So suddenly my six seconds of credit becomes four seconds of credit. The next one, well maybe it takes me one minute 35, so suddenly I'm a second in deficit overall. So I'm constantly listening to that, playing a little bit of mind games and it really helps me to keep focus on just trying to maintain a nice steady set pace. So I really like the Platysens Marlin in that respect and what it can also do, which is very, very cool, is allow you to actually sort of measure out a course. So let's say you want to, you're in a lake, let's say, and you want to actually plot out a rectangular course that you can swim on. What this will do, believe it or not, through live GPS tracking, it will actually tell you whether or not you're actually sta staying on course. So let's say, for example, you've gone down to the lake and there are no buoys or markers to, to swim around, but utilizing the little app, you can actually plot out a map that you'd like to swim or a route that you'd like to swim around on Google Maps. And this, when you're swimming along, if you start to deviate from that, so let's say I'm swimming out towards that point and it's 200 meters away, there's no visible buoy for me to swim towards. 
as soon as the marlin detects that I'm swimming off course, let's say for example, I shift more towards my left hand side, which is what I personally tend to do sometimes, shift off to my left hand side, it'll tell me to turn to one o'clock. And if that's not enough, it'll tell me to turn to two o'clock. So I'm getting these constant adjustments. And when I actually hit that marker point, it just gives me a nice bling. So it's a little bit like a game as well. So I'm trying to sort of navigate correctly, get around this course and get that feedback from the marlin. So a great, great piece of kit to be actually using when you're out there. Now, how can you then structure this, all of these things and these ideas into a structured open water training session? Well, first and foremost, I would say keep it simple. I'm gonna give you three training sessions now that you can do in the open water, which mimic a lot of what we do in the pool. A few years ago, I came up with the concept that if you did a 2K continuous swim in the pool and just look at measuring consistency of pace, that'd be a really good way to develop low level aerobic sustainability. Now, when you're in the open water, you could do exactly the same thing. So that's probably not too much different to what you're already doing, but utilizing the Garmin and the Tempo Trainer, and maybe utilizing the Marlin as well, or either, then you can allow yourself to have a little bit more sort of objectivity about how you're going rather than just sort of swimming for time or swimming for okay i think that's about that distance you can get a little bit more structured with that and like i say you can play games in your head about trying to keep that consistency there so that would be always the first recommendation how to structure what you're probably already doing but just with a little bit more sort of focus the second session which i'd recommend and i did this many many times in the lead up to my manhattan island marathon swim win in 2013, I didn't have any access to any pools in Canada, or rather I did, but they were all at around about 33 degrees Celsius. Nowhere good for the sort of training that I needed to be doing in around about 14 or 15 degrees Celsius worth of water there for the Manhattan swim. So I found a lake, Kelso Lake, if you know it in Ontario, and I brought my Garmin and I brought the uh, Tempo trainer because the Marlin wasn't available at that time. And I like to, every other day, I do a set of 10 times 400. Now, if you know our Red Mist Endurance session, this is just exactly that, basically. So I would set for the Garmin to beep at me every 400 meters, and I'd swim down the length of the lake, okay, and wait for that 400 meter beep to go. Now, the concept of the Red Mist Endurance session, the 10 400s, is to simply do 10 fours with around about 30 seconds rest between each one. You do the first four at CSS plus six, the next three at CSS plus five, the next two at CSS plus four, and the last one at CSS plus three. So let's keep that dead simple. That literally means that whatever you start off with on the beeper, you're just gonna bring it down by four seconds after the block of four, the block of three, the block of two, the block of one. So let's put a proper example in, Kate, in place there. I want to swim, and I was probably swimming at around about this level when I, when I did the swim. I wanted to try and sustain around about one minute 15 per 100 at CSS plus six. So I was in pretty good shape at that point in time. So one minute 15 per 100 for a 400 meter swim works out at five minutes. So I did my first four 400s with the beeper or the Garmin going off every 400 and the beeper going off every five minutes and just trying to get really accurate with that pacing. After the first four, I took the tempo trainer out from the, underneath the hat just dropped it down by four seconds, so we went down to a 4.56, and then we did three more 400s like that. Then we drop it down another four seconds and do two more 400 meters just like that, and then finally drop it down again by four seconds. Now, I'd love to say I was in that sort of shape right now, but it's probably not gonna be anywhere close to that, probably more like starting off at around about one minute 30 per 100, for example. But it is what it is, and what you can do, certainly do is carry over your CSS pace from the pool into the open water. And you're probably just gonna need a couple of sessions just to fudge factor it because maybe you're wearing a wetsuit, which should be faster. Maybe you're not as good in the open water versus the pool, et cetera, et cetera. But that 10, 400 suddenly gave me a lot of structure to swimming in Kelso Lake and it was, it was really quite good. Now the final set that I'll, I'll mention here would be simply our Goldilocks session. Now, if you haven't heard of the Goldilocks before, you can certainly do this in the open water. It's four 100s followed by a 200, that's the baby bear, four 100s followed by a 300, that's the mama bear, and then four 100s followed by a 400, and that's the big daddy bear. Now, the idea behind this is you take around about 15 seconds rest between each of those little exercises. You'd set the tempo trainer to your threshold pace per 100 meters, so again, let's take another analogy there. Your threshold pace is 145 per 100. You'd use mode two on the tempo trainer. You dial in one minute 45, and then in synchronization with the Garmin, if that's what you're using, 
This would be set to beep every, or vibrate every 100 meters. You press go at the same time, you do your first 100 meters, and you just try to make sure that you get there when this vibrates at the same time that this beeps. Okay, so that's a pretty cool way of doing it. What you probably want to do is when you stop at the 100 meters, try to stop dead in the water so that the Garmin doesn't register, let's say 102 meters, just try and stop dead as soon as it goes, and then you're gonna start up again 15 seconds later. Now, of course, you could do that same thing with the Marlin as well. It'd be a little bit more structured, a little bit less cumbersome because you're only using one product and it'd be talking to you at the same time. It might even keep you on, this, on the right track and the right, right route as well. So you could definitely get quite structured with that. So those are a couple of ways that you can actually try to bring your training and make it a little bit more structured in the open water using either a Garmin and a Tempo trainer or as we would recommend using the Platysense Marlin. Now we'll pop some show notes in the bottom in the links here for you to actually sort of see where to get access to those. The Platysense Marlin retails for around about 150 US dollars and with the code swim smooth, you'll get 10% off that and then choice of shipping options as well to get to you from wherever you are around the world. So I'm hoping that these ideas help to stimulate your ideas for what you can be doing in the open water. If you're not quite there yet in the Northern Hemisphere, you will be soon. Depending on all the rules and regulations, they're changing day by day. We're talking to you here today on the 30th of March. It might well be that all of this is null and void from the 1st of April. But even if it is, by the time that you do get back into the open water, at least you've got some training tips for helping in that scenario. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do let us know by dropping us a comment in the feedback section at the bottom and making sure you subscribe to the channel as well. We've got some great content coming your way. Thank you.